Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. All right, folks, welcome to the Dice Hour. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Expect a calmer, more sedate. Yes, more uh, professional. Well, let's go with sedate. You need to calm down. <laughs> you think I'm going to be professional. <laughs> All right. Sedated. Uh huh. I've been sedated. Yeah. <laughs> So we're all this the peaceful top ten. Yes. Um, we want to say thank you to our sponsors, World Series of Board Gaming. We're going to be there. Some of the Dice Tower staff, and which ones people ask, we'll see as of the you know as the time goes by. But some of us, I will be there for sure, mm -hmm. and we'll be playing games with folks, and also doing some of the live coverage. The Dice Tower the coverage of the World Series of Board Gaming will be held here on the Dice Tower channel itself. So mm. you'll be able to see the final games of many of the matches and the final. And the final all the way. Um, so check it out. And you can go there by entering a contest. Um, to enter a contest, you... To enter... I'm saying this wrong. You can enter a contest to win this. Email mm -hmm. us at contest at .com, And just put the word Vegas. And in the body, mm -hmm. tell us your address. That's all you need to do. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is That's the same it. contest that's been running for the last two weeks. But you can win a $450 gift certificate. Which is at half price to be able to come. So we hope. Oh, oh my goodness. We hope you can come. That's that. So much for sedate, sedate folks. Sedate, yes. Yeah, sedate went right out the it's window. It's already gone. We're flinging pens around. My drugs wore off. It's a complete catastrophe. The downers didn't work. <laughs> Here today, gone sedate. <laughs> okay. We also want to say thank you to several of our. Um, we also want to say thank you to several of our backers from Kickstarter. We yes. have David Phillips. Mm -hmm. Chad Hatting. Yeah. Roger Dodger. Who? Bardia. Really? It's Roger Dodger Games, I guess. Oh, ah, okay. Bardia Ganji. Mm -hmm. Lena Drake. Art Morris. Yes. Stein yes. Olson. Anders Bernland. Kit Strong. That's the kind of truck I buy. Yeah. I buy a Kit, Kit Strong. Strong. Yeah, truck. yeah, yeah. Donald Arnold. Or is that Donald? How's it spelled? D O N O L D. Probably Donald, just an alternate spelling. Donald, Donald Arnold. Yeah. And Anders Johnson. Anders right. Johnson. I like these names. They yeah. are. Very A lot unique. of good uh, novel names in there. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Well, here we go. Wow. We are into the... We are into the... Did I just repeat myself? You said, here yeah. we go. Here, here we, we go. go. We are into the... We are into the... Yeah. Did I just repeat myself? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let the show. On the, thank you, stenographer. Mm -hmm. Let me let the show on the record. Yep, yep, yep. Let the record um, show. So we're down to some pretty high numbers, frankly. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of numbers where I would not be. I would be more impressed if someone put this on a box. Okay. Like if someone said number eighty-seven on Joe Schmo's hundred of all time, I'd be like, okay, fine. But yeah. if you said twenty-three. Number yeah. 23 best game ever, according to Joe Schmo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you're allowed to do that. Um, so, yeah, this is... Uh, I have one new game on this, this, this grouping of ten, and the people have one new game. I have two. Z has ten. Do I Ooh. have any... I have... Uh, no, that's next time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have one. Oh. You can safely ignore Mr. Garcia's list. That's correct. But I, if he had a new one, you know what else you could do? Still ignore. Mm. Maybe that one's new. The numbers are getting lower? Oh. Well, we can live with that. Mm. Thank you to everyone who did the super chat so far. I saw Davi and Schwarzbruder and um, Genway. Genway, too. Yep, 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 yep. All right, you think people are ready for that bar to go away? Are ready for the bar to go away? Well, let's try it. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you got guys. You got guys. Yes. Like, people are messaging me on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. All right, go. Go. <laughs> Hmm. 
My number 30 to start off this big list is a crossover with you, I'm almost sure, and maybe Z as well? Yeah, for sure. Why not? Let's say yeah. Gosh, I don't remember. Let's say yes. Or maybe not yet. All right. So date. My number 30 is a campaign style game, which, you know, it's harder and harder for me to get these played, but this one I think does it in a way that... The you, Haven of Gloom. No, not Gloomhaven. Uh, it is a game where everything is set on one board. It's a haunted train car. My number 30 is Vagrant Song. This, sir, is a three-way crossover. Three-way crossover, had it, yeah. But I can see why you would have forgotten that. And I'm very happy that... Um, I'm, I'm speaking my truths. Mm. I can say it, right? If I... If I say I'm speaking my truth, I can say anything I yeah, want. You don't get to say anything if you say first, no offense, but. Uh -huh. Got it. No offense, Mike, but we're still not interested in hearing more about Vagrant Song. It seems odd since you both had it on your list. I'm not going to sp spend too much time on it because you both did talk about it. But one thing I will say is that I'm glad that now, since we all have such affinity for it and we've been talking it up so much, uh -huh. it is much more readily available That's now. True. Because for, for a long time, we were talking about how much we enjoyed this game, yes. how exciting it was, how innovative it was. One of the things neither of you talked about that I particularly enjoy is how that kind of Pulling from the bag system uh -huh. works. Uh -huh. No offense, but I did talk about you that. You absolutely did not. Um, <laughs> look it up. Uh, look it up, people. You'll you'll uh, you'll prove me right. The idea that those pulling from the bag can be utilized in so many different ways, depending on the scenario, I think is very smart. Um, but it's more available now, and so people that are interested have a chance to get a hold of it. A terrific theme. A really, really, really unique feeling game. I like Vagrant Song a whole lot. Number 30. That picture made me, it reminded me I need to buy coin capsules you gotta yeah. for that game. Yeah. That, yeah. We might have some around here, actually, if I'm not mistaken. We have some, but I don't know if they're the right size. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but either way, I like coin capsules for some games. Like Clanky, they work well, but they. Right. this is a game since you're pulling stuff from a bag. They work really well. Yes. yes. All right, number 30 for me is one of my favorite Feld games. It also happens to be one of his newest games. Which shot up for me after oh. for a while there, I was kind of able to ignore Feld games. Because mm -hmm. he was doing the Merlin thing yeah. and the, like for, for a nice chunk of time, I was not interested. Mm -hmm. I had sort of peaked at Carpe Diem and those kinds of games. Yeah. I'm sorry, not Carpe Diem, Notre Dame. Carpe Diem's the game. And Carpe, uh, Diem, Carpe is Diem, Diem is this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came. You spoiled your I own I did it. It's all right. You know, it's all right. That's how which, I do uh, it, okay? Which edition of this? No offense, but shut up. <laughs> This is Carpe Diem 3rd uh, Edition. Okay. It, it came out last year, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's a, one of the many after the first one. Actually, the one I have now is that white cover one. Right. Which I guess is in their fancy schmancy line. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, yeah, I really like this one. It's a drafting, I guess, tile drafting, tile laying game. You're building up your little board, putting together buildings made up of two halves that you put together. Some of the features are on a single self-contained tile mm -hmm. and some can spread over multiple tiles, like, you know, fenced-in chickens or whatnot. <laughs> what I really like above and beyond that, and I love tile-laying games, especially when you have parameters like limitations, I really like the scoring in this game. Okay, I think it's very clever. This idea of at the beginning of the game you shuffle up and lay out all these scoring cards and then when it's your turn to score, you put out a token between two cards. Like you cover up a spot that is the, the threshold between two cards. Yeah. And you score both of those. Okay. And then that spot is taken, and no one can ever score those two cards mm. at the exact same time again. Mm. And so they all, they dwindle. What you can score for right. dwindles as the game goes on. You know, I still really played neat. this. I haven't either. Really? What? I have not played this. Can no. you say... No offense, but catch a palooza? I'll only play the first edition. You got it. <laughs> Good luck telling the colors part. Look, honestly, I'm just going to be honest with you. Okay. People are going to finally start listening now as I mm. get to my number yeah. 30. Okay, what is it? This has been on the list for six years, and it's been the most consistent almost of any of my games. 31, 24, 38, 30, 28, 30. That's good Very fiber. Consistent. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, and it's good, good fiber, fiber given me mm. by Mr. Lockett, my favorite game from this oh. company. And that is near, and as Grover would say, far. So who's Grover? The Muppet. One of my favorite books as a kid was a Grover book. And then he gets up. Oh, oh boy, here we go. And he goes away. Here we go. Don't do this. Here we go. Far. 
and then he runs back. I would run, but I would trip over the table. Where's that fall. censored bar, Roy? <laughs> Oh, oh, there it is. Quick. There yeah, you go. Yes, thank Good timing. you. There you go. Let's okay, stop. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Um, thank you, Rod, for the super chat. Rod has a game I like mm. that we cross over on. Brian for the super chat. And Luca. Luca Green. Luca says, my list is the best so far. Wow. Oh, no offense, but that's the truth. Okay, anyway, uh, near and far, I really love near and far a lot. I think <laughs> it's fantastic. I think it has a very the perfect balance of story and game. Right. Nowadays... There's a lot of great games of story, and I think Sleeping Gods has the best story. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Lands of Galzir has good story. Mm -hmm. But Near and Far has not as good story as either of those, but it has good story and then an amazing game on right. top of that. Exactly, right. So, <laughs> oh, let's go to the Peeper's Choice, and I just realized that the Clam says Austria, greatest country on the planet. And you All agree right. with that, of course. I do. Mm -hmm. All right, who wants to go first here? Um, I don't remember. Do you want to go first? I got me? this. All right, you go it. for this one. Oh, this is super easy. Good. These are all it. easy. Give I got to make it a little bit more vague. Okay, I'm going to give you some more left field clues because these are too sounds. easy. Just all make right. some sounds and I'll try to guess it. <laughs> no. Um, science. Okay, science. It's from Genius Games. Not this high. No, it's a left field. Science. That's not enough. What do you no, got, you need Mike? more than that. I don't have anything for science. Yeah, we, we, okay, well, we the should, word maybe I want, we should both try at the same time. You want to do that? If he's going to make them, okay, 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 okay. So now yeah. I'll give you the, the, the easier clue that okay, will get to you immediately. Drafting. Seven Wonders. Boom. Science? Science is the Is it Seven Wonders or Seven Wonders win? Duel? It's Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders Duel is not on the people's choice. I'm lying. Okay. Okay, Seven mm -hmm. Wonders was your 30. Last year it was 16. Okay. So it's dropped a bit, and it was... Seven Wonders twice in 2012 and in 2016 okay. was number two. Yeah, Seven Wonders it's was hot, hot, hot. It's was still pretty hot to still be in there. This is actually the biggest kidding? drop going from 16 to, to 30. But I think that's just, again, some games are hitting the list on a higher level. For a game this old with this many expansions and offshoots and everything, to be number 30 in the People's Choice is a fantastic achievement. And the reprint did not hurt. It did not I hurt. I think it, it was. Uh, it was well regarded. It it's was well it was reprint. accepted, you know. Yeah, it's nice. I like the reprint for a couple of reasons. One, it, it just made it look a little classier, little changed bit. barely anything. They didn't pretend it was anything else. No. They didn't go, Seven Wonders, now with unseen three new cards, nah. big box edition. No. Straight reprint yes. with just better looking cards, and then they immediately reprinted the best expansions. Yes, to work they with did. It. Yeah. Yes, they balanced some of the wonders a little bit. Little they bit. changed them a little bit, mm -hmm. and they changed the uh, the big change. Actually, is the iconography, the sort of leveling up system. Yeah, they they lifted straight up from Seven Wonders Duel. Correct. With uh -huh. the little symbols, used yeah. to used to be that the writing of the building they that it came it from. There. Yeah. Now it's just a little symbol. Yep. That's I smart. really like that. So, and this one here. Um, <laughs> Uh, this one here, I think, also, if you didn't get the new version, you still have the old version, you shouldn't feel too left out. No. Yeah, no yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I wouldn't be like, oh, I don't play with that old garbage version. No. Like I said, this is the way I like reprints to be. Agreed. All right. My 29 is a game that I know that Tom... Either Tom or the people mentioned, and um, so Tom. Well, it's true. Yeah, we're one of the same. Yeah, this, this is true. One of us. One of us. Your tie is a particularly appropriate. Oh, uh, it was the people, not me. It was the people. My number twenty-nine is the Isle of Cats. If I knew this was in your top ten, I would not have worn this tie today. No, well, it's not in my top ten, but it's on. It's I on mean, my top today's thirty. Today's ten. Yes. Uh, I, my so, wife even tried to talk me out, but she's like, "You don't even like cats." The Why Isle do you of Cats. Own that tie. That's a good it's question. A cool tie. It is a cool. And maybe tie. I don't hate cats as much as I say. You mean you? No offense, <laughs> but. The Isle of Cats is a fantastic <laughs> polyomino game, but more than that, it's, it's, it's polyomino and puzzly and all those things that I tend to like. But I also really like the economic aspect of this game in that you get a certain amount of economy at the beginning of every round, which is essentially fish. But you're using that economy, that, that currency, to 
spend the cards that you're going to be playing out. So what ends up happening is it's a, it's a drafting game, and you end up with this huge hand of cards, every one of which you want to play. They're all good, mm -hmm. but you have to make the decision based upon how much money you have. And not only is that money the cost to play the cards in front of you, which could be scoring cards, they might be cards that help you go f first in turn order. They give you an initiative bonus. Okay. But that economy is also used to buy those polyomino tiles. So you're having to make mm. multiple decisions. It's a relatively simple game, um, especially depending on which mode you play. But it has some nice decision making. It's not just a mm. grab some polyominoes, stick them on your a regularly shaped board and do the best you can there. No, it's really a lot more clever than that. You are choosing, again, this is something I'm so uh, happy about with games, you are essentially choosing ways that you're going to score, right? There's some base ways you're going to score, but you can also play out cards that give you bonuses depending upon what you're doing in the game. If you are going for a particular strategy and you happen to come across a scoring card for that strategy, you're going to want to play it. So I like that aspect to it. I like the fact that it has a bit of an economy. It's also a very versatile game. If you want to play it with families, there's a family mode that gets rid of some of that extra stuff. Just a really, and a great production all the way around. I just, this is a, uh, this whole game to me is a class act. I know that the theme is off-putting to some. I don't obviously have an issue with it. I think it's a really, really good game. Isle of Cats is a game that keeps coming back to the table. I keep seeing people play this too. This is not one I've played, um, and I don't know, I might like it, but it's honestly not one I'm interested in playing either. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't like that cover. I don't like the the whole cats laying in weird shapes so, mm -hmm. that, the, so that the polyomino makes sense. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I like the game, but I also don't think that's a good cover. Yeah, I don't know. The cover to me is, it's okay. I mean, I, I can understand if you see a cover and you're like, oh my gosh, that's ugly. I mean, no, no I, I mean. It, there's... Nuance. No offense, Mike, but some of us have a wider range. Oh, is that right? Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind when some of your picks come up. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> my number 29 is the Splendiferous Outstanding Isle of Cats. All right, my number 29, as far as I can tell here, I just went through this, is new to the list. Oh. You lied. You lied. I did, did lie. That didn't I take did you lie. To, this uh... is the one. The other ones are not. This is new to the list. It's a small game that... Upon being acquired by me, ejected a bigger game from my collection, and they both had two of the same words on the cover. Wow. They're basically called the same thing. Hmm. It was a pretty easy substitution. One could say it was handy to get the first one out the window. Oh, I know what this is. This is Long Shot the Dice Game. You're right. <laughs> Oh. Ah. Huh? That's how you get clues, baby. All right. Handy. That's good. Uh, long shot the dice game is a flipping right, I guess. You are betting on horses. You're buying you're horses. Rolling you're rolling dice. Yeah. They're, they're racing ahead mm -hmm. and you're making bank. It's a lot like long shot, which came out many years ago, but long shot was honestly compared to this. And like I said, I owned long shot till I got this. Compared to this, it's long and drawn out and yeah. a little luckier than this. Mm -hmm. Long shot the dice game packs a lot of wallop, a lot of fun, a lot of game into a very small little box. Yeah, Tons of replayability right in the box and variability. Just plenty to do. A fun amount of thinky and, you know, tactics with... Roll dice and we go, woo, that silliness, right? Yeah. So it's a good uh, meeting place between those two feelings. I like this one a lot. This is a, like, immediately, I played it the first time, I'm like, this yep. is, I'm owning this at some point. Yep. I'm, I'm getting this one. This I is think going I was in. in that first game with you that you yeah, played. Yeah, I was dealing with Chris yeah. the first time. I'm, I, I immediately thought, wow. And, and started questioning myself very quickly, mm -hmm. like, wow, I think I like this better than Longshot. <laughs> right. I think this might replace Longshot for me. Wow, that mm -hmm. took me all, like, one second to decide. Yeah. This okay, is so much well, better. Okay, well, you know, no offense, but some of us <laughs> like Longshot. And for a game that plays a nice high player count, you're always you're involved in everybody's turn, which is also yeah. crucial. Yeah. So. All right, I hate to tell you, but it's my turn. Mm. All right. No offense. No offense, <laughs> but this is getting tired. <laughs> We may have run this joke. We already. That might be fast. a new record, yeah. All right. Um, also, like Z here, yeah. I've lied. 
There's actually two Ooh. new games in this, right. in this section well, of 10. There you go. Good. Good. And I'd like it twice, but we'll come back to that. All right. All right uh, my number 29, brand new to the list, is my current favorite civilization style game. Whoa. This high. Mosaic. Wow. Hmm. Mosaic. I really like this game. That's you amazing. Do. Top 100 games of all time. I'm telling you, I think. 39. 29. I think one of the things that. There, there's several. Me mechanisms, yeah. You, you know, you, you have katana. Yeah, I do. I do have mm -hmm. them. But heart. I hang out with my I hang out with mechanisms and like, in a locked closet there's some, in his home as well. <laughs> that's a shrine. <laughs> there's um, there are some mechanisms that when I see them, I instantly am like, oh, I think I like this. Yeah. And the really snappy, quick actions per yeah. turn, I love that. That's not a mechanism. No offense, but that's not a mechanism. You know what? It's a feature, I suppose. Let me look. It's a feature of the design. Ask Jeff Engelstein. There's no writing and there. And or Isaac Shalev. <laughs> Snappy, quick turns. That's SQ2, mm -hmm. SQT. Jeff Engelstein just texted me. <laughs> okay. Just didn't know. All right. Okay, Mosaic. What There's about a 30 mosaic? second delay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your logic has been crushed. <laughs> Censor this man. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I've been, I've been foiled by you two. Yeah, yeah. Look, I really like Mosaic, though. I think it's a yeah. lot of fun. That snappy quick turn SQT, which I'm mm -hmm. going to try to make it think. <laughs> that is not going to work. Trying to make I'm sorry. Happen. Snappy quick turns SQT. SQT, the SQT yeah. factor is high. You're right. Is high. Jeez. That really matters. I played a little card game last night that had that same thing. It was really fast turns, and I was like, man, mm. I just like this. Yeah. So Mosaic, I, I like the the. There's theming in it too. Sure, no, a little bit. It's that whole yeah. build out in the Mediterranean area and yeah. grow the different ancient sieves. A little bit, you know, we've seen it before. And I wonder if they'll make a sequel that's in another area of the world. Who knows? But as it is, Mosaic is my 29, mostly because of the SQT. It's good, and, and it's one of those things where there are multiple good things you want to yes. and can do on every turn. All right, People's Choice 29. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is it a good one? <laughs> it is. Uh, it was 20 last year and 28 the year before that. Clue. What's the clue? And then it was yeah. 82. Give us the clue. Okay. Okay, so the clue here would be... Uh -huh. I can't use the word of the one of the words in the title because that's that, that's cheating, even though I have made the rules of this game up myself. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, no offense, but you're being very generous saying rules. Machi. Machi Koro? That wouldn't be up this high. It's going to be Machi Koro Space Base? Space Base. Boom! Yeah. You get, you helped him. No, I knew right no, on, but I'm no. like, I knew Machi oh, Koro wouldn't help be you? that high. No offense, but shut up. You didn't help me. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you got in my way. Space Base <laughs> is a game, a very popular game. Mm. Um, and in fact, it w it did pretty well on the... Um, on the... SQT? The SQT. The cruise. Oh, okay, oh, okay, yes. got it. Yeah, the SQT factor is high in this one too. No, but people were checking this out and playing it. I was very pleased they to were. see that, um, and it was a lot of fun. Now we can't discount the fact that this is a Dice Tower People's Choice Award, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is I do wonder. You champion this game so highly. Mm. It's a popular game, clearly, but I do wonder if in a non Dice Tower People's Choice Award, if it oh, would no be one this cares. high. Oh, just, across gaming as a whole, no one cares. This game is dead. Deader than dead. All right, well, I'm being me, serious. I think you're going off the deep end on that. I one. think uh, you need to be sedate. <laughs> okay? No, I think you're right that there is... Tom does talk about this a lot, and yeah. it seems to get a lot of love. I think there might be more to it than that. I'm going to look up the board game Geek rating I'm right curious. now. Yeah, go ahead and curious. look it up. Yeah, be on your phone right now. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's go a good ahead. call. If I understand anything correctly, mm -hmm. that is... Riveting watching. <laughs> I'm going to go ranked, ahead and do my number 28. One, it's ranked 188. That's, that's, that's good. That's very high. That's, that's high. what I call and the Dice Tower ranking. And it has 15,000 ratings. That's, okay. a, that's a popular game. I believe <laughs> the Mythbusters are coming I believe in. I can call it All right. Anyway, you're number 29, Space Base. Mm. Good. My number 28 is a cooperative game that just charmed me uh, upon its first play, and subsequent plays have revealed some depths to it that I didn't even necessarily know were there at the beginning. They have come out with a couple of expansions, but, you know, and, and while they're fine, the, just the base game has enough variety in there to get a whole lot of play out of it. This is The Loop. 
This is a game that has a time travel theme wow. and so a really cute little uh, cube tower in the center of the board that kind of drives the bad stuff that comes out. But it's a game that allows you to pull off some really clever feeling turns. I like cooperative games where as the game goes on, you get more and more opportunities to build up these epic turns. So early on in the game, you're putting out fires, you're trying to get the clones back to their original times, you know, their age so they can be removed from the board, and you're kind of dealing with the issues that Dr. Foe is, is spilling out on the board. But as it goes on and you're getting more and more cards, because essentially if you play the game as efficiently as you can, you're getting at least one card every turn to add to your deck. And you're trying to get cards that synergize with each other so that you can pull off these loops right. where you're spending energy to play three or four cards, untap a couple of them, play them again, maybe untap them again, and just get these really big, big turns. Because if you're not able to do that, then the game can feel like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to be able to do this? It's going to outpace you, right? It's going to outpace you. So there is this, yeah. there is that timing element and, and, and kind of, yeah, it's just, it's got a really great tongue-in-cheek, super tongue-in-cheek theme. They don't take it very seriously, but it's a lot of fun. It comes through. It's one of the few rule books where I actually enjoyed reading the rule book because they had the right... You know, sometimes they try to get humorous with the stuff and it's cringy. Yeah. Not so here. I like the art. I know it's maybe not going to be, uh, you know, universally liked, but I, I really like the look of this game. Um, it's a, I just think it's a rock-solid cooperative game that I have enjoyed teaching to other pe people, and I still like playing it both multiplayer and solo. My number 28 is The Loop. Really mm. love this one. All right. Do you like that one, Tom? I do not. Mm. But that's okay. I mean, you I actively like don't like it? I actively... I, I act thought it was okay. Mm. I... It was yeah. fine. It was fine. I mean, it's... But there, it, it, it just, I don't it's know so that crowded. it would make my top 100 of cooperative games. I don't get it. I um, really don't understand why. Tom's a hater. <sighs> just admit it. I don't know. I like the mission system. I like how you how you complete. I like how you win the game. I like how there's mm -hmm. multiple bad things that are happening. I like the theme of the game. I like the card play. I, I like, like the, the theme. I like the individual player powers. I mean, if it was Marvel and this was Kang, Tom right. would be all over. That's true. Don't don't feed into that lie. That is true. It's a terrific game, folks. If you like cooperative game, you, know, you should check it, it out. My number 28, let's talk about a game that everybody can agree on is good, okay? All right, let's get in with 28 it. 28 is something that's been on Mike's list. It's been on Tom's list. Okay. It's been on the people's list. It's been on Roy's list. It's on everybody's list, okay? Number 28 is Sleeping Gods. All right, well, sure. We can all agree on that one. We can agree If on you want to go okay? the obvious route, sure. I like to make my top 28 <laughs> very obvious <laughs> picks. <laughs> There's going to be nothing here that... Uh, that shakes, uh, you know, mm. anyone's belief in, in good old straightforward gaming. Sleeping Gods is good old straightforward gaming with a very low SQT. That's true. This is not a this snappy, is not a snappy quick, quick turns, turns, especially when you get into combat. Ooh, but mm -hmm. it is fun. The rules are a little iffy, which is why I actually am looking forward to the follow-up to this. Yeah. Because I do find... Some of the rules could be clearer. I agree. When can I do something on somebody else's turn? My little cards, can they help you? When do, Who's taking the action? Who helps to do that? Then when we get hit back, who has to take the hit from that? Mm -hmm. There's all those little, like, slight role-playing sort of issues. Yeah. Because you're running a whole cadre of people. Um, but I really do enjoy it. It's a fantastic, fantastic story-driven game. So fun. So well-illustrated. So well written, yes, um, and just immersive. Twenty eight, sleeping gorge. All right, thank you to Clue is awesome, <laughs> who put Colorado up as our favorite state ever. Oh, well, all right, sure, Clue. I like it. It's a, it's, it's one of the few um, polygon shaped states. Yep. Colorado is probably one of my favorite states. Me actually. too. I know some. I know some great people. I've only been there once. Chapman's. Shout I've out been to there once. Shout out to I, I from really Colorado. Liked it. Colorado's. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. My yes. number 28 was 32. My brother lives in Colorado. My number 28 was 32 last year and 33 the year before that. So very, very consistent. This was a game that I did not want to play because the first in this quote-unquote series was an, a decent game. Okay. And I didn't want to play more of it, even though the two games have nothing in common other than the word whistle. 
Oh, and boy. And that is Whistle Mountain. Okay. Whistle yeah. Stop is a fine little no, connection route game. It's, it's not garbage. great, though. It's just it's fine. Whistle Mount is amazing, even though that cover is not selling that game. This this is one where the, the, the way yeah. they handled the, the, the kind of marketing of this game, I think, was a huge mistake. That's I was actively avoiding this game because I thought it was related to Whistle Stop. It doesn't help that Whistle Stop's first expansion is a mountain. I know. Expansion. Seriously? Different designers. I mean, this game has nothing to do with Whistle Stop. I'm not even sure it has anything to do with whistles, but that they put right. them in the game. Like whistles are like a wild resource it's a in this wild, game. Yeah. They're very useful. But you're building a dam. Mm -hmm. Did the first game sell particularly well? I didn't think so. It must have done okay, though. Yeah, it must have done okay. I mean, that's the only reason you link yourself to something like that. Yeah. You've not played this one. I've not played but this whistle like stuff. But you like stuff normally. I do like I Luke Lore, yeah. Yeah, I think you might dig this. This is a worker placement game, but you can build... Where the workers can go. You're building this dam and these little buildings on it. And as you place your airships out, the more things they touch, they'll activate. Mm -hmm. So you can build like a custom spot for your ship, which then, of course, Mike will put his ship in there instead. I sure what? will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Luke Laurie all over your... You got Do no not chance. Luke Laurie all, all over, over my Caputo. That's right. Anyway, I really like this game a lot. So that's my number 28. Whistle Mountain. Oh, so uh, is Scott Caputo a co-designer on this one yes. too? Okay, good. So yeah. yeah, so there is a connection there then because Scott Caputo did Whistle Stop. It's still such a different game. Oh, it really is. They don't feel like... It's they, the they whistle version. It's the whistle version. That's right. All right. Are you guys ready for your clue for number I'm, the People's Choice 28? I'm ready. This is the sixth year it's been on the list. It was as high as number eight. Okay. The clue is Uncanny Valley. This is going to be... Uh, Not Stardew Valley uh, wouldn't be up here all right, this high. No, no, this is going to be the firefighting game. Un no? Uncanny Valley is like the people that look... Yeah, the I fake know. people, that AI. Cover, that cover is looks like fake people. Oh. That oh, you're talking about Great Western Trail. Boom! Great oh, Western I don't trail. consider Once this again, cover to be uh, yep. Uncanny Valley Once again, triggering. well, no, not this not one. This, this is the beautiful version of it. Yeah. Well, the other one, even, I don't consider to trip, trip mm. that up in my mm. brain, but I, I get that some people do. You don't do. think so? Oh, man, I, I do not like yeah. that original cover. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, but this one looks beautiful, and they, they just came out with Great Western Trail Argentina. They have another I, one or two coming out. This is actually one of the games that was in the... Um, World Series of Board Gaming. This is one oh, that okay. people like a lot. You know, a giant rondelle. I don't know why I didn't like this game very much. I never played this I, one. It just it's it's it was okay, but I didn't. I really didn't like it that much. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I need to play that again. I'm not huge on Fister games. I'm I hit or miss. The, the ones, ones I like, I really stuff. like, but yeah. I might like this one. That cover's gonna help. The it new certainly one. looks better. I don't. I think Z would not like it, actually. I tend to think I expect maybe not, not to. to really yeah. You said I don't really like deck building. This game has deck building in it. It also has a rondelle in it. It's like the kitchen sink's thrown in. It all fits together and flows pretty well. But mm -hmm. I like rondelles, and there's not enough games with rondelles. I agree. It doesn't feel like a rondelle game to me, though. Okay, okay. I mean, other than you are adding... You, it is, and you are adding new spots to go on it. That's probably my favorite aspect of the game. Is that you That's are adding new places to kind of stop, but it just, I thought it was okay. I mean, it was a well-designed hmm. game, clearly, and, and it's a, some people's favorite game, so there's something there. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just not mine. All right, let's move on. Okay. My number 27 is a worker placement game. Uh, one of the earlier worker placement games, and it is... Way out west. No. Okay. No. Um, it's not... It's We're going to list all the worker placements in order of not, them being released. Not quite that old. I would say next next generation from, Stone Age. from those. Now, Stone Age is around the same generation as Kalos, right? Ish. No, Kalos is old. Though. All right, well, then keep going. Anyway, my number 27 is about producing wine. My number 27 Kills is... Viticulture, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say specifically Viticulture: The Essential Edition because this has the aspects of t of uh, Tuscany in it, so that oh, you okay, know what I'm saying? Okay. Because like if the moms you, and the papas and stuff, it has that kind of thing. It has the grande worker and all those kinds of things. So this is a lovely, lovely worker worker placement game, as I said, where you are playing cards and you are aging grapes to then produce wine. Um, it is best with Tuscany, especially the, which is the expansion, the, the Tuscany Essential Edition. If you put both of those together, you've got what I think is just a really, really terrific experience. Mm -hmm. um, there is some 
card play luck that you have to be kind of okay with. And I can say something similar about Agricola even, you know. Sure. Um, so you just have to be aware that there are going to be some times where maybe the the order cards you have are not the ones that are working with the particular things you're doing. But it's a really, really, yeah. really good game. And this is another one that people that I introduce it to usually are very taken with it. Um, but it's getting harder and harder to find someone who hasn't played Viticulture now at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you I like don't know. that feeling? You I want don't. people who haven't played it? I like introducing this to new players. Mike to, is to not players. a fan of... Like he, as soon as people start playing the games he likes, he's no, like, that's not like true. That's cool. not true. It's just I do have one of the things. Maybe it's an element of being a teacher at some point. I like introducing people to things. I one hundred percent agree with you. I yeah. like that same thing. Although I can't imagine that you can't find people who haven't played this no, because no, every I, year there's new gamers. At, the, at the dice tower conventions, I have a hard time. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. But you're right. Yeah, if I was if I was you know in in new game groups and stuff, I, I would do that. But yeah, beautiful game, lots of fun. Viticulture it's Essential a, Edition. There's been some Viticulture confusion is my only... Uh, there has been, yeah. <laughs> Same with yeah, Carpe some, Diem. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah, but that's my only drawback there, but I do like Viticulture. Now, thankfully, I hope you can just get Viticulture Essential, yeah. Tuscany Essential, 100%. and forget about anything else that came before. You don't yes. need that, the other thing, because I've got a, like, a Frankenstein edition yeah. with pieces from Previous viticulture and right. Tuscany, some parts of that, but yeah. not all the parts. No. It's a whole thing. My current kit, my current kit. You have the wine box. Kit is the viticulture wine crate, and it has <laughs> viticulture <laughs> essential edition. It has Tuscany essential edition yes. and viticulture world, which is the cooperative yes. expansion, all in that one box. And a bottle That's of wine. That's perfect. And several, so several bottles I of wine. I almost said the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a softball joke. No offense, but anyone could have thought of that. You just dunked on yourself. Ah! I think we're getting a little too sedate here. <laughs> Let's kick it up a notch. Let's have uh, here some we wine. Go. Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. Hey, My number 27 is about to blow your mouth off. No! <laughs> it's about to destroy everything you thought you knew about gaming. Tell That's us right. more! My number 27, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> is new to the list, too. <laughs> How did I go from no this new ones ridiculous. to a two new ones? double lies! Whose list were you um, looking lies at? Lies on lies on lies! <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, my number 27... We used up our energy. Yeah, yeah, right, sorry. Now. ...is a game that both Mike and I, I think, backed on Kickstarter. Okay. They ran a very good crowdfunding uh, campaign, mm -hmm. and now they are done doing that, and they're just going to go straight to retail releases. Okay. So this is Trekking Through History. Yeah. Trekking yeah. Through History was honestly one of the best Kickstarter campaigns I've been, I don't say involved in, that sounds weird. but You were involved have, in it. That you, I've backed. Yeah. If you back yeah. it, you're involved. You are 100% involved. I, yeah. I was a big investor in this. When you back a Kickstarter, you back every other Kickstarter. Starter who kickstarts that Kickstarter. That, yes. That, that got away from me. No, yes. yeah, I see that, yeah. That was a great mm -hmm. Western trail right yep. there. Uh, <laughs> this one is lovely to look at, simple and quick and engaging to play. Yes. Has a really neat theme where you're, you know, supposed to be taking a trip through history and you're bouncing through different events, historical events, gathering those cards. I love that in this game, just like they did in the Parks game, just like they've done in some of their other releases, they tell you the event and the whatever, the information relevant to gameplay on the front of the card. Yeah. But then on the back of the card, there's a little informational text. Yeah. There's a little blurb there. Mm -hmm. If you don't know something, you can look at the back of the card and get a little something to pique your interest. Yep. I love that. Yep. It's not educational. No. It does not hit you over the head with, you know, the research they did. But if you want it, it's a card flip away, and I love that. Yeah. You know, it's handled so well. This game, I think, if there was any justice in the world, would be one of those evergreen introductory games. Yeah. Up there with Ticket to Ride. I agree. Yeah, I agree on that. And, you know, that, that kind of game. So, yeah, Trekking Through History, stunning little game. Light, it's not going to blow the barn doors yeah, yeah. off, but lovely. And this is a game that I have sadly uh, misplaced. It is. It's literally misplaced because I tried to do what you did with my list where I was, you know, put meeple and then put in, put in stuff from this game. 
This is one that kind of slipped through the cracks. What? I can almost guarantee you this is going to be in my top 100 next year. And it's so going to be a, a pretty decent rate. It just, for one reason or another, it just got left off my list. But this is... Because you hate it. No, no, I gave it a nine. It's a fantastic. This That's... is nine in your top 100? No, and, I, and it should be. It really... I hope you're prepared for me to say... Should have been trekking through history for every upcoming entry in your list. No, not 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 necessarily. Yes, but yes. No offense, but I will do that. It definitely should have been on my <laughs> no list. No offense, but this please is, don't. It's a terrific game. It's All a terrific right. game. Thank you to Joshua from Texas, the greatest state in the uh, southern USA of states next to right Oklahoma. In the, right in the yeah. center. All right. <laughs> Uh, where are we at for me? Oh, 27. What's we're, your 27? we're back to my next lie. Mm. So last we're just, time... We're lying a lot. You yeah, this, is, today. this yeah. is rough. When I was at 43, I said... Not 43, where is it? Uh, 37, I said Time's Up was my favorite party game. You did, I remember I that. was wrong. This party oh. game I like better. This is my favorite party game. Dixit? Dixit. It's in the Dixit family. Stella? No. No, I mean, it's in the Dixit style of games. Oh, okay. But this is my oh, personal oh. favorite of all of them. Oh, what's that one you like with the... Detective Club? That's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Detective Mike, Club. Mike, you're so wise. Detective... Yeah. I really like this one because it's so much fun to watch people tell the truth badly. Mm-hmm. To where they look like they're lying. Because everyone has to play a card and matching a word that everyone but one person knows... You're not going to have cards that match that word, so you're trying to pick the best one, and then you have to explain why you picked it, and people who know the word pick the card that even works a little bit yeah. as they struggle to do their, their real-life workaround. It's hilarious, and you're like, that person's clearly lying, <laughs> and they're not. I love that part of it. Even if you're a bad liar, which a lot of people don't like playing these games because you know, it's hard to be a, right. a bad liar, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because the people who tell the truth also sound like they're lying. I really like That's this a game good because point. of that. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Very, very fun. And you can mix it with the Dixit cards if you want yeah. to. So that's this is, this my is a fun one. number 27. I feel like this game got very little attention, though. It did. Like also, Dixit is huge. I'd like to Detective say Club. I was accused yep. of looking at the live chat to answer the question of Detective Club. I'd like to repeat. There's at least a 30-second delay. That I am not able to see the answer on the live chat. So uh, unless it's taking me over 30 seconds to answer. I got Detective Club fair and square. We don't believe you, Mike, says uh, you're wrong. Uh, that person that I just saw, which mm. is not, proves that there's not a 30 second delay. Uh, on, no, someone, that's someone make that definitely real. not true. Let's do okay. the people's choice. Here we go. Give people's us the clue. People's choice. I'm having a hard time giving a... Oh, I can give a clue for this one. All right, here we go, Z. You ready? Ready? Yeah. September. Earth, Wind, and Fire. The hunt um, for Red October. Now, uh, how about uh, September is the ninth September. month. September. Yes, it is the ninth month, but it's not the ninth game. Seventh continent? continent? No. So, for us, it was like the 14th game. Wow, wow. Oh, this is going to be a pandemic game. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Boom! There we go. Mike is a beast. <laughs> yeah. It took me, I, I was not on your wavelength at all. Well, if, anytime someone plays Pandemic Legacy Season 1, I'm like, September? And they're like, mm -hmm. yes! <laughs> okay, I forgot which month was the nasty month. So here's yeah. what happens in Pandemic Legacy Season 1. You go through the months. In September, you open up an envelope. <laughs> you don't... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think mm. I missed a super chat there, Roy. Go but, ahead. Yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, this was... Uh, oh, spoiler alert, man. Christo for you, yes. Mm -hmm. It's not a spoiler alert. All I said was the word September. <laughs> no, 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 no. That picture. <laughs> now I yeah. know you rip things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that happens, I think, two seconds into playing the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I... This was once number one on Board Game Geek. Yeah. Still very highly rated. This game took the world by storm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And I still remember, you know, I, there's different gameplays you remember in your life. I will never forget us playing through that for the first time. Mm -hmm. It was such a great experience. So, the, I, I don't put legacy games in my top 100 any longer just sure. because, again, it's hard to judge them because, would you play it now? Well, no, I've already played it. Yeah. But this was a fantastic one. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. My number 26 is a game that um, had probably the most impressive production 
when I first experienced it. I had never experienced a board game that had that level of production. Nowadays, it would be seen as just, oh, just another game. It's a Days of Wonder game? It is a Days of Wonder game. That's, just, it, that's almost like... Right, you can almost guarantee that, Days of Wonder that, right? was known for a while. This is a game that has since been redone uh, by Mojito Studios, but I do kind of still prefer the original, if I'm honest. This is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Really? I still adore this game. I, I just there's nothing about this game that I don't like. I like the theme. I like the production. I love the interplay of different kind of little mechanisms going mm -hmm. on. Right? I love the, the the way that the card market is set up to me is just so brilliant. This idea of you literally take this deck of cards, you take one side face up, one side face down, you shuffle them together, and then when you create your market, you're just going to naturally have some cards that you can see, some cards that you can't. And you keep adding to these rows so that eventually the row of cards is so juicy because there's so many of them, but many of them are going to be face down. Could they be corruption cards? Maybe. But they may just be a great set of cards. Yeah. Such a smart little thing. It's got polyominoes way before polyominoes were cool, but it's a just small part of the game. Mm -hmm. It's got contract fulfillment. I absolutely still love this game. It's a game that I used to play with my wife quite a bit. She still likes the game. Um, it's, a, it's a perfect weight. It's, a, it's a, just above a family weight game. Yeah. Um, I, I just adore this game. Still holds up. I, I would play this. At the drop of a hat, love. I love, like love this fine, but wow, it's it's just. I think it went up for me this year. I think it even went up like a couple. Take of away the components, and it's three, a three. decent game. Add the components, and it's better. I don't know. No, this is. I mean, this is to me a sweet spot. Katala. I mean, just I think this is. This has a lot of fun mechanisms. It really in it. does. It really. Yeah, does. there's something about it that is. Um, Everything comes together in a in a juicy package. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And you're building the board. I'm sorry. It's still it, you know it still is novel to this day. Yeah. I still it enjoy cool building it. To like slowly from the beginning of the game to the end. Right. There's a castle or not, I don't know a temple. Or yeah. No, that's a whole thing you've built up there. It's the box. It's insane. The yeah. throne on top right. and all that. It is fantastic. Cool. Wow. Thank you very much, Damien, for the super chat. Damien, stop by Yokohama. Yokohama's in my top. 200. You know, I, I've not played Yokohama, so I can't speak to it. I have not it. either, yeah. I've yeah, never even like seen it. It looks good because it, it looks like, a, well, he likes Istanbul, right? Yeah, so Tom, why wouldn't he like watch it? Watch your mouth. Well, you got to be smart. Okay. No okay. offense, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. My number 26 is one better than trekking through history. Okay. Is it trekking was... in national parks? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with trekking it. Trekking the world? No, not at all. They're completely unrelated. Mm. <laughs> I was just making a statement, a factual statement. Okay? I thought you were leading up to something. I'm no. not. I try not to whenever I can. My number 26 is claustrophobia, 1643. Mm. The mm. best of the claustrophobias. That connection's so obvious. I don't know why you didn't. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> September. Tom, don't you get it? Uh -huh. Back in the year 1643 was a nasty month. In this game... It's a two-player only game. That's first and foremost. Mm. And it's a big old box with a bunch of miniatures, a whole bunch of cardboard, all of that. When I first played this, I thought I was not as into dungeon crawl games when I first played this. Yeah. I am a lot more now, I would say. But the fact that it was only two people, that was very interesting. And the fact that it's asymmetric. One side is playing the demons and troglodytes and whatnot coming forth from these uh, caverns under the earth. The other side humans combating these demons. So you're doing drastically different things. And you're doing them in different ways. And then just the pace of the game is relentless. I love this mm. game. It's about 45 minutes. That's great. It has exploration. It has some nice sort of attrition as you are playing. The human players begin with everything and slowly are taken out because some of their you know possible actions are eliminated. So they get worse and worse and have fewer options as they continue. This is why I think you and I disagree so much on that. You hate that. I really do. I, when I play through Dungeon Crawl, I want to get better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's 100% mm. true. You, you're right. And if you don't like that, I get it. But in this one, you are leveling surviving. Down. Mm. So it's that if you come at it from that point of view, these guys are stuck in a cavern filled with literal demons <laughs> trying to escape. They're not going to get better. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, thematically it makes sense. You're going to get bit. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that what demons do? <laughs> like that. Mm. Got it. You ever been bitten by a demon? That's not your business. <laughs> yeah, baby. Mm. Tom's feet are going to be on camera tomorrow, <laughs> folks. One of them showing a big old bite mm. that a demon took out of his uh, Achilles That's why I don't show foot. my feet. It's a foot hickey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My 26. Claustrophobia, 1643. Mm. My number 26 has another thing that attracts me to games. So there's the uh, mm -hmm. QSC, the quick snappy quick turns. Snappy. Which that is, is actually the thing. Out. I wrote that down. SQT, by the way. Snappy quick turns. No, it's QSD. Now it's QSD. Wait. Oh, you're right. It is snappy quick turns. Yeah, SQT is out there. SQT, yes. Okay, you're right. Anyway, this has another thing that I love a lot, okay, what and is that's it? grids. Grids. Gotta love grids. This is also a game that I like introducing people to because unlike bitty culture, no one does play this game. Okay. Um, and that is Adventureland. Oh this my is a gosh, good game. Tom. Talking about how it's so high on. Yeah. What was true. the last one you said there? The. The, the Loop? Or, no, well, both, Cleopatra. The, the Loop and Cleopatra. Yeah, yeah. It was like, this high? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Adventureland? I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. Are you, even I Wolfgang was... Kramer doesn't think this game's as good. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. It I'm really sure. is just one big grid. It really also yeah. it seems like I'm the only person who bought a copy of this game because it's always on discount on different places. I had this it. and the expansion, which was, the expansion is really hard to get. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. I, at mm -hmm. almost every con, I end up teaching this to someone because I'm like, oh, there's four of us. I got a great game that plays really fast, really easy to teach. It is it's very much fun. a family game. You very know what's weird? I know you taught this to me at a game store when we were like at PAX or something. And I don't remember anything about the game. Well, thank you. There's little tokens seated all over the board. and you're, No offense. You're moving either, but. you're always moving down and to the right. You can never move any other way. It's a ratchet board. You're flipping over cards every turn. That is one ratcheting. of those spots on the board. And that's where you put something. Yeah, it's like Gosh, super simple. I just simple. don't recall it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I know how it works, kind of. And I remember, you know, yes, that whole Oh, moving. I remember that game now. You remember that? You taught us that at a yeah, game store. Yeah, I do. We also played that night. We also played uh, Hail oh, Hydra. It's on clearance oh, on Amazon today? Go Hail figure. Hydra. I believe I it. I do remember that, too. Adventureland, I really like it. It's fast, and like I said, it's easy for you to find. So unlike some of the esoteric picks that these guys put on the list, I try to give you something you can get. It's also a great production because it's Habba. Buy you one know, on Amazon Habba today, does a very Tom. nice job with their right. family games. Here's well, your clue. For Here we go. The People's Choice 26, which incidentally was 26 last year. Wow. And then it was 31, 29, 52, 70. It's been on the People's Choice for six straight years. And the clue is choices. Ch -ch -ch choices. Choices. Options. Come on, man. That's uh, it? Okay. Uh, second clue. Um, Polyamino. Feast for Odin. That's right. Point to you. Oh, choices. Okay, because there's a lot of spots. Because Feast for Odin has like 80, uh, it's, it's, I think it's 64 spots you can put workers. Yeah, but that's Jeez. a little. I thought he would get, no, you literally said, no. when you talked about Feast for Odin, like how said, many choices there I did, there I was. said it's a feast of choices or a feast of spots. It's a day. It's a day. Yeah, relax now. No! <laughs> My goodness. I'll tell you when I want to get sedated. <laughs> It'll be later on. Yeah, this is a great game. And this is, uh, is it the highest of all the uh, Rosenbergs? Maybe. Uh, probably. Know. People love this game. They really do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all right. I, I, again, this one, I'm sorry, falls in that category of I'm not interested. No, no, no. Everybody I, just, I mean, the one thing everyone talks about this game is not how fun, how great, how innovative, how anything. It's like, man, you have so many choices. There's so many things you can do. But I'm so, like, that's not that interesting to me. It is I to enjoy me, a though. lot of games where you uh, do two things. Yeah, but I love, yeah, no, you give me that plethora of choice. It's, it's like more go, than that, though. It's not just that there's a lot of choices. Do you like a restaurant? No, that's basically all it is. <laughs> Shoot <'em. laughs> When you go to a restaurant. Yeah, uh-huh. Do you like a, a restaurant that's well known for a few dishes and they make those dishes really well? Yes. Or do you like the restaurant where it's like a whole book and there's like mm. 800 things? And they're all good. Mm. And they're all good? Mm-hmm. I'd rather go... No, they're good. Right. They're good. Nothing, they're not bad, but it's a tons of good or like a few really great things. Two or three things. great things, yeah. I don't know. 
because I love the I like I love both, the I, I love the tons of good. I mm -hmm. really do. I and I get why people like the spots that have a few things and are amazing. Yeah. But I just like flipping through and going. I never had that before. Never had that before. Even though even when I go to those restaurants, I'll be like. You have There's the same thing. Eighty things I haven't had, but I will take this one I've had before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Again, I, I get it. I'm sure it's great. I'm just not. It's not my thing. All right. All right, my number 25 is a game that is sadly out of print. It only had one print run, from what I understand. It was a Kickstarter. Learned Formula E again? No. It learned you nothing for my 26? But from what I hear, there's a possibility it may, it may be able to come back around. It is a theme that is sadly underrepresented. It's an Old West theme. There's not enough of these Old West games. It's a Euro. It does so many things well. My number 25 is Coloma. Man, do I love this game. Oh, wow. I absolutely love this game. It has simultaneous card play where you're having to kind of, you know, it's very interactive. You have to be kind of aware of what other people might want to do because if you pick an action on that central action wheel that you're alone in, you're going to get a better version of the action. If you have to share that spot with somebody, you're going to get a lesser version of the mm, action. You're still like going to be able to do it. Yeah, you're still going to be able to do it, but you're going to get a lesser version of it. There's oh, like a little that. bit of a, of a up in the upper left there, like a little movement element of the game. There's really clever card play and buildings that you build out that give you special abilities that also make all of those spots on the wheel better so that you can either try to differentiate so that no matter what action I pick, it's going to be slightly better than the base. Okay. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to go really hard into this strategy, which is based off of this section of the wheel, and I'm going to build a bunch of buildings so that every time I get that action, I'm doing it four times as well as Tom. Okay. You know what I mean? What's and hope the best that that's part enough. of this game? Well, the, the theme and the art and the mechanisms. Yeah. I mean, the all the of magnet. it. Oh, and the magnet. Yeah, it's great. The, that little central there's a, wheel. There's a Magnet in the there? little central wheel is a magnet that you can literally fling it and it'll stink, stick to the board. You can spin it around. It's I a want, double I want, magnet. I want every company to do this. Yes. Put magnets in your spinners instead of those things that you squish together yeah. and then are either too tight or too loose. Yeah. Yes. No, this is perfect. And it has a really cool economy. Uh, you know, the way that the little gold nuggets work out. This is a rock solid Euro. It's a redo of an older game, I think, called Hangtown that I never played that the designer Johnny Pack kind of updated and, and you know, streamlined some things. Um, and again, unfortunately, it, it came out as a Kickstarter campaign. I think it was available retail for, you know, that initial print run, whatever they had left over. Well, this over. company had a string, or at least a couple, not well-received games yes. before this. Yeah, this was not one of yes. them. Coloma yes. did quite well, and it's, it's, it's built up a lot of buzz where I think there's a there's interest now that they may try to re reimplement it. I'd love for them to. I wonder. It's not mentioned a lot. I literally just was like, this needs to be in the Dice Tower Library. And it's oh a, yeah, it's great. It's a good game. And I actually, I wonder if this was in my top 200 because I know this came across. I was like, yeah. I like these. I like that upgrading actions. That's an. Oh, it's great. That's also on my list of things that if I can upgrade my actions, I'm like, yes. It also Revive. plays. Revive just did that recently. It yeah. might play. It might play. Up to six players. I think too? it does, and I think it's not. Terrible. No, because it's simultaneous oh, actions, right. right? I think it's one to six players. Just a really good game, and of course, I love the art from the Micho. But this theme, also, this kind of, you know, boom, boom town, really like that. old west, gold nuggets. I love it. I am a fan, a big fan of that theme. There's not that many. There's of them. not enough. Yeah. Yeah, and they are sort of. It's a predictable theme if sure. that's a theme chosen. Mm -hmm. It's very by the numbers, to yeah. be fair. Right. But I don't care. I'm, mm -hmm. It's a fun world to, to be in. I really do like that Boomtown idea. Yep. All right, my number 25 is a two-player only game. Pretty recent. This is probably on my list uh, this year and last year only. Because I, I don't think it's any older than that. And it is a an awesome thematic, I guess... Um, it's got a cool theme, is really what I should say. Post-apocalyptic punk. Ooh, I like that. Kind of theme. And very vibrant, very trading card game-esque kind of, you know, tug-of-war style game called Radlands. Oh, wow. Yeah, you do so, like this game. You Rat know, it's really ranked highly on BGG, too. It's is really it? high. Mm -hmm. This game is very popular amongst people that like it. They yeah. really like it. <laughs> No, I know that sounds stupid. I'm saying this is one of those games where this is people's game. They'll play this Got hundreds it. of times, you know? I think because it does have that sort of trading card game feel. It does. 
you know, yes, it's very condensed, it's a very sort of condensed, uh, distilled version of that with not that, you know, you're not buying extra stuff, there's not that many different kinds of cards, the action space uh, or, you know, the sort of overhead is fairly small, but there's a really nice back and forth in this one, you know, mm -hmm. what you're... How you go about it, the cards are multi-use cards, so you can use the card and chuck it for a special ability. You can deploy it onto the map, and that's a unit, you know. You you can do all sorts of interesting things, and again, the game is... Seems like it went through a lot of iterations until they boiled it down. It's like a reduction until they got to the absolute fewest things they needed to make the game interesting and functional. Yeah. It's a card and like six of these water tokens and that's it. Yeah. My, this one's, it's doable, you know? My issue with this one, well, there's a couple. It's not my style of game, but for this style of game, it's very smart. And I like that it is condensed and, and pretty simple. Is that I really think you need the deluxe edition for this. I really, really for do. For the playmat? For the playmat, and I think the cards are better quality, too. The cards are a different printing, And yeah. you shuffle this, and you handle these cards a lot. I think the cards are fine in the other one. They might be, but for the, the amount that you're going to play this, cards. Yeah, maybe. The playmats are nice, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, Radlands, my number 25. All right, my number 25 has been on the list for four years. It debuted at five, which was pretty high. There's a lot of games that are doing this sort of thing, but I still like this one, and I like the newest futuristic version of this best, and that is Chronicles of Crime. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. 2400, yeah. Yep. Chronicles of Crime 2400, I like a lot, but I like all of them. Actually, my favorite is, is 2400, but then right after that, the... 1900 or the noir one, uh, Crackles Crime Noir. Noir, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like that one too. I like how they're able to take this system and keep doing interesting new things with it. I, I like figuring out the crime, yep. uh, and it's not. See, a lot of the things. The reason I like this one better than say Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, and all that stuff is those yeah. are always like, did you find this thing on a map? You measured this out where it was like 2600. I'm sitting around going, that guy seemed guilty, and when I mentioned his wife. He didn't seem sad enough. I think he murdered his wife. And you're using stuff like that, which is not really... You're supposed to be using deduction and stuff. Sure. But it, I feel like we're watching one of those, you know, Law and Order episodes when yes. you're playing this. And, it yes. just, and it, it's fun. It's And it's fun to talk it out. I don't. I played these solo, and they're fine solo, but yeah. I much enjoy playing it with one or two other people. Yeah. Because then you get to talk it over. You're like, ah, that, that person's a liar. I know they're lying. And in uh, Noir, you can actually then punch them in the face to see oh, if they're lying. Goodness. No, you can. You can you can rough them up. Ah. Although, if you rough up like the wrong people, that can be problematic That's not for you. Good, yeah. Also, you know. You they should... all have a little twist, right? Like, yes. they, the futuristic one lets you, like, scan people. You have, like, this cybernetic bird companion mm. or something that can scan things for you. You've got the dog in the 1400 one. It's all, like, yeah. again, the twists like the they put on the. The framework with the QR codes and all that stuff, the twists on top of that, really do differentiate the themes and the settings a lot. Yeah. They do a great job with that. It's fun. Some shout outs. We want to say thank you to Koala mm -hmm. for putting Saskatchewan on the map. Hooray for that. Bruno is we'll cheering talk, for Brazil. We'll talk, we'll talk about him. <laughs> and Patronux wants us to give a shout out to Peru. And I think he said Z Garcia was the voice of the house in Spanish. Pueblo means house, right? No, it no, means town. town. Voice of the town? Casa's house. Yeah, Mike, tell him. Yeah. Let me see, where is it? La voz del pueblo. The pueblo also means the people. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're not. All right. Um, that's my number 25. All right, your people's choice number 25. Here we go. Let's get the clue. Mm. This one's too easy. This has been on the list since 2011. Debuted oh, at 11. Okay, I got it. Okay, it's been on, on for a while. Where's the galaxy? Mm. Farmers. Agricola. Agricola. No, it can't be because he just said that uh, Feast for Odin was the highest Uve game. Also, it's been on since... I did say that. Stone Age? No, that's not farming. Farmers? Farmers. Caverna? I don't know. You're thinking too heavy. It's not gonna be Bonanza, farmer. I didn't say Rosenberg. That's true. I keep. I got yeah, when I think farmers, I, I think, think Rosenberg. A hundred percent. All right. How about um, farmers market? How about um, cities? Carcassonne. Thank you. 
I would not have said farmers for. Well, Carcassonne. I'm trying to give more esoteric clues. I would clues. say tile. That's the thing people always argue about: is the farmers and how they score. That is That's true. true. Yeah, that is true. yeah, yeah. All I would right. have said uh... catapult. <laughs> I should have said catapult. That's true. That's on me. I apologize. Yep. River right. would have worked also. River. Catapult is great. Yeah, mm -hmm. catapult. Here's what amazed me. Carcassonne is 25 this year for the people. It was 30 last year. You know, Carcassonne is one of those games that people love to like, <laughs> you know, you has a million expansions. You just, literally, <laughs> you just literally did that okay, earlier. Okay, all right. Um, like, oh, this is kind of a game no. that I played and now I don't care about anymore. I've got a different take on it. I think it's that you can still say that you like Carcassonne and you can't still say that you like Catan. I really think that's what it is. This is a game that got a lot of people in the hobby that yeah. you're still allowed to say you like. Right. People get give you grief when you say, "Oh, I like Catan." I mean, snobby, jerky I, people. I get that. Yeah, I get it. But, but yeah, you see what I'm saying? I think it's more accepted ticket to, ride to still and, like Carcassonne. Yeah, Ticket to Ride and Carcass Carcassonne, you're still allowed to like those. Yeah, if you're Catan, you're like, "Oh God, you oh, like old." How haven't you played mm -hmm. anything? Old yeah. games. Why do you like these old games? <laughs> no one cares about that anymore. Uh -huh. Hit the credits. <laughs> oh my God, what's wrong with Carcassonne? Carcassonne. I need to get up. <laughs> All right, we just got a super chat from India. Awesome. India is my favorite state. Mm hmm. That's Indiana. It's my favorite food. That's my new one, okay? Oh. Indian food is my favorite food. Oh, I like we that. also don't have an Indian restaurant here in Homestead. Which is if anyone criminal. opens one up, I will, I will be there often. You will patronize mm -hmm. them. <laughs> oh, and Clayton says New Zealand, and uh, we also do not have a New Zealand restaurant we in don't. Homestead. What Hold do on. they eat in New Zealand? Food. It's very I mean, I mean, assume seafood would be because they're, you know, island, but... Um, I never went to a New Zealand restaurant, so I would not know. I don't know. I would love to go to a New Zealand Shepherd's restaurant. Pie? Well, you would have... Maybe. You'd have the indigenous dishes, and you'd also have the dishes that are coming from, you know, like the British Empire and such, and yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, chips, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That garbage. My number 24 is a crossover from Tom on this very grouping ooh, of, ooh. Uh, of a list. It is um, also my favorite. Near from, and far. Yep, it's near and far. My ah. number 24 is near <laughs> and far. It's the only game I had that has a series. It's a fantastic game. Look, um, and while I love and appreciate the ambition of Sleeping Gods and the, the scope um, of that game, near and far is laser honed, right? It's so fast. It is. And it has that perfect combination, like you said, of story elements and and you know light Euro elements. And like I think I said one, during yours, that you know that the story stuff is good because that's the first place everyone's rushed to. Yes. They want to rush to the places where they can read the story. Um, you know, they added a nice expansion if you wanted to do that, that you can play it cooperatively if you wanted to. You don't have, you know, it's great both ways. Um, Near and Far is a game that just has held up. You know, uh, above and below, I don't have as much of a compunction to play it. I'll still play it from time to time. Mm -hmm. But every time that I'd be playing above and below, I'd be wondering why I'm not playing Near and Far. And that's not the case for Sleeping Gods. Those are very different experiences. Right, I don't consider them even... Really, yeah. They have story. They yeah. feel like, yeah, I mean, the, the three in the story... Yeah. Do feel a little closer to me, even right. the one I said that nobody likes. Yeah, uh, now or now never. Or never. Mm -hmm. But you're I'm right that it. Sleeping Gods is an offshoot from it that. Is. It does not feel like another one in the line. It does not. So unless I was playing maybe with younger people or, or newer gamers, then or I might illiterate. go. Or No, then I might go for now or, or uh, above and below. But near and far is a perfect sweet spot for me. Just a fantastic game. Just so <laughs> so good. To be fair, Mike. You can't play Sleeping Gods with someone who is illiterate. They have to read a lot. Um, that's my number 24. <laughs> yeah. Near, yeah. check, and mate. Okay. Far. No Does offense, but hmm. stop playing games with Tom Bass. <laughs> my number 24 was 25 last year, but it has been as high as my, gosh, I don't know, number two? Woo! At least, at least number two. So you're saying it might have been number one. Maybe, I don't know. I think it never did make my number one. But it was very, very high. Yeah, it was my number two in 2018. Not that long ago. But it's now it's basically... Ago, if you think about it's it. It's trash now. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know it's garbage. I mean? You hate everything about it. I do, I do, I do. This is 
Arkham Horror, the living oh. card game. I, wow, I thought this is draft. I mean, I, I know twenty four is really. You hot, heard it here, I folks. This was top three Arkham Horror, living still. card game is it's not dead. still no, no. no. It was it was number two in twenty eighteen, and it was number five in twenty twenty. And then and then it has slipped sixteen, twenty something, twenty four. Okay, it's still very high. It is. It is very high still, mm. absolutely. And honestly, it's here because it's harder to bring to the table. Yeah. That's about it, you know? Although you played through a campaign of That's it this true. year. That's true. You, Camille, and Chris played through a campaign. Oh, Roy, you ruined it for him! Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did Roy ruin it for in me? In a different way. When he put it in the bag of all failures? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. It was going to be my number two again. Oh, that's a shame. But then... Uh, Hate to see that, folks. Now it's my 20-something. Who cares about this game anymore? You can fail and fail again. I hate it. Mm-hmm. So stupid bag of luck. <laughs> no, I really like it. It's just it's hard to bring to the table. It's another mechanism, it the B O L, mm -hmm. the bag of luck. I don't know if I would. <laughs> no, B O S maybe. No, no, it's a different bag. Bag of stuff. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> there you go, twenty-four. Save me, Tom. Save me. All right, my number twenty-four is. The second last game on my top 100 that's been on since the beginning. Okay. That's confusing. That was a confusing I got, sentence. Yeah, I got it. So my original two, uh, my original 100, only 10 of those games that I did in, 20, in have, 2005 have been on are all. still in my top. And this I is the you. second okay. I have a 10% retention rate, which I saw when I said that someone's like, Cold of the New. I'm like, there's 20 years worth of games So this in is there. the one below La Havre. Okay. No, Le Havre is two was not on that Le original Havre did list. Not come out oh. in 20, no, it's Cosmic one. is one of them. Got one it. of the two is Cosmic, and the other one is this one. Ticket to Ride. So this one here is, is that no. The, is this the ugly game? You no, no. This is my. I don't know which one I'm talking about. You have too many ugly games on your list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my heaviest game on my list by a um, country Seven mile. ages. No. Duel of Ages two. It is heavier than any game in the entire Dice Tower collection. Twilight Struggle? To the point where we don't even bring it sometimes when we go somewhere because it's that heavy. Crokinole. Close. Oh, Pitch Car. Thank you. Pitch Car. It's really Crokinole mm -hmm. with little cars. Pitch it, car. Well, actually, okay. it was, it, when it originally was on the list, it was called Carabande. Mm. That's how you know you're a hipster. Right. And if you ever want to get annoyed, if you like Pitch Car, you miss the days when they changed Carabande to Pitch Car, and the new pieces were cut with a different saw than the original Ooh. one, and you could not attach them. And I had a lot of, for a while, because I didn't want to get rid of all my Carabande stuff, I had a lot of janky connection things. Oh. <laughs> and people were mad. Oh. But it was actually, from what I understand, they, they had switched wood companies, the new company, and they could not make them the same size or whatever. Okay, okay. But yeah, Pitch Car, fantastic game. I, I love playing it. It's, it's been a while since this one's come to the table. Again, because of its heaviness. And I'm not... I mean, they, we thought we were talking about the game weight, but it's yeah, literally it a heavy game. It is a bin of stuff, right? It's, it's crazy, too. because two bins, plus the straights. And now when this thing gets put together... There's like all kinds of like glue is being put on it and like talcum powder is being put on it. You gotta put talcum powder on it, like, okay? Like uh, like uh, maple syrups being put on That's it. That's why you were in charge of helping me with this. Yes, at least, right. I did yes. not put glue on it. What are you talking there about? Was glue he on did it. put talcum powder on it. Okay, something. the gold bond was flowing <laughs> like honey it's down the mountain. It's a special powder made Let for these the games. gold <laughs> bond <laughs> flow on <laughs> down your talcum powder. Love pitch car, my number twenty four. All right. People's Choice number 24 here we go. was also 24 last year. All right, here we go. What's okay. your clue here? Uh, let me see. Asymmetrical. Root. Cosmic. Boom. Oh, come on. I, did, you, did you want me to give you a clue that said, Z played this on Monday? Bloody root. Yep. Root. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so root. So this is still oh, I need to play such this. I need to play this physically. Such yeah. a popular game. This is one of those evergreens that's heavy. That are yes. they're, those are rarer. This than is the highest rated war game. What's that the you're coin thing? What does that mean? So counterintelligence, counterinsurgency. counterinsurgency. It's it's a it's a game system, GMT, uh -huh. right? Okay. Uh, that, that it's a series of Cuba Libre, and there, there's a number of them where there's different asymmetric factions. This is basically taking that idea. It's not a coin game, but it's like kind of uh, adjacent to it. 
Pocket where, change. Yeah, but it's way. Yeah, yeah. It is way simpler than those games. It those is. games also it take. Is. Those have a lot like of flow six charts hours and minimum. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah, this was. I'm, I want to play this physically. I want to play this mm -hmm. on the table with four factions, though, so there's no funkiness. Right. And no, try it out and just see what I think of it now, having it in front of me on the table. And they don't probably mention this in the app, but they're, you know, the, it's kind of started with this reach system, which basically is saying, hey, look, if you want a balanced set of factions, mm -hmm. keep the, the reach numbers within this range. And it kind of makes it so that you don't have... That's a thing? Yeah, oh, absolutely. So that it's not like this crazy imbalance. What is the reach? It, each, each faction has a particular value, basically. Okay. And okay. so it's like, oh, these are two super aggressive factions. Actions, you probably, if you're going to have these, you need to balance them with some other ones that Got make it. the game Got balance. It. So, okay. yeah. They've really accounted for a lot. This is a game that has had a tremendous amount of, still, has a lot of support. It has a lot of, you know, community involvement. And, and so, Leader Games has been very good about kind of keeping this with a living rule set and all kinds of stuff in the great apps. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This There's is a, a game that's there. built to last. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Jamie from Brazil for your super chat and Jorge from Costa Rica. All right. Uh, what is that? Costa Costa Rican cr credits. Credits. Could that, be credits. Okay, credits. Yeah, sure. Your credits are no good here. Um, my 23 is a new game to the list. Woo, 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 woo! It is a relatively new game, and yet again, it's um, a little tricky to get a hold of. Although they did just uh, do a new Kickstarter a while ago that's making it available. It's from a Japanese publisher. And no. Are you water themed? Yes. This is your 23? And it get may, up my back about Adventureland. At least. And it may go higher. This game is fantastic. I, I mean, I have no problem at all putting Aqua Garden as my number 23 game of all time. This game is spectacular. I want to say it's really, uh, really good. Mike might be the hipsterist Maybe new hipster. One hundred percent. Call me a hipster. I'll hipster. St I'll stand this game up against anything else you guys are putting up there. This is done. It's going up against game. my twenty-three. I, I have mine. not yet. Let's see what happens. I have not yet. Admit, you know, look, oh, no. I understand that. To you know, I'm not completely ignorant to the fact that when I introduce a game to somebody on a dice tower convention, that they are probably going to want me to think that they have charmed off. No, I tell, I, when people come in, you're not there. I'm yeah. like, when Mike teaches you a game, you will like it. You will pretend to like it. He can't handle rejection. All I'm telling you is I have, that is not true. I've had many people that. that have come to me afterward and said that this is a game that when, after they've played it, they've sought it out, they've taught it themselves, it's gone over really well. It's a, a fantastic game where you are trying to build up the best aquarium and you're doing it kind of that one-way track style where you can go as far as you want but you can't go backwards you're putting oh. sea life into your boards there are particular limiting factors as to far as to where you can place them okay. and you're trying okay. to put them in such a way that you are trying to fulfill particular requirements it okay. is a charming game. It's a gorgeous production. I was going to say it's production. charming. I like it. It just oh, it's is great. It's so light it can almost float away. No, 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 that's, that's I mean, fine. No, I, mean, that's, I, mean, I, I like again, it too. Just, you disagree, I, Mike, with that? Yeah, I do. You don't I, think it's that light? No, I think that there's a... I mean, if it, with the with the economic element, with the way that you've got to place them in a particular ways, with the way yeah, but that... The, the placement's very restrictive. It's not like sure. you're sitting there going, hmm, I wonder what I can do. You're picking what's... All I can tell you is that somebody that's good at this game is going to beat somebody that's not, and that means that it can't be that light. It's not. It's not completely luck driven. I mean, I don't know, Tom. I, 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 I like it. I like it a lot. I just wonder if you're being. I wonder sometimes if you are over. That's your list. Do what you want. Maybe I, I'm about look, to. I'm about to put my foot in my mouth. By saying, like, yeah. no, great choice. As long Mike. as you don't put my foot in right. your mouth. We all okay? have. Look, we all not have. On video. We all have our games. Let's but save my, it for the top ten. My Why is chat not scrolling. My. <laughs> My bottom line is that I do think that if this game was more readily available, Boy, I think chat got stuck. Yeah, I do think oh, that if wow. this game was more readily available, it would be widely popular. I don't see anything about this game that that is. Not... I retract everything I said. Mike, it's a you. good choice. It's I want to learn this. Yeah, it's a good game. Really good game. My number twenty-three, without reservation or hesitation in the slightest, 
is Aqua Garden. I think it's one of the nicest looking games on all, the, all of our top 100. It's I want to learn it. I'll be happy to teach it to you. Can we I have it in it? the library. I want to, yeah, I want to play this one. Mm-hmm. So I can, you know. That no, you might like it a lot. It will no, be on your don't top tell me what I'm going to like, okay? It, it will be your 23 next year That's or right. else. Maybe, but to be 23, you, right. you will like it. Got to go down <laughs> smile and nod. Um, <laughs> my number 23 I'm putting up against your 23, Mike. All right, let's do it. Oh, you think your game's pretty? My game's pretty. Let's see it. You think yours has cute animals? Mm -hmm. Mine has cute animals. Let's see them. You think there's interesting choices? I do. My game has interesting choices. Let's see them. Wingspan. Everdell. Ooh. Yeah, those these are these are kindred spirits. These games, <laughs> kindred. <laughs> There's animals in both. So I'll are. give you that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Everdell does have the wide uh, does have the sort of wide distribution, I it guess, does, or is yes. widely available. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have reached for it. A lot of people are yeah. interested in playing it. It is. One of those that seems to me to be not obviously universally liked. Not everybody's going to like it. Some people simply won't like it because it is popular. Yes. Well, but, yes, but I mean, there's also people. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, counter hipsters, I call yes, them. Yes, yes. No, but there's people who I can see not liking this. I like it, like, at the lowest level of my like. Mm hmm. So you, like, can just barely contain the throw up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What I mean is, I think it's fine, but I don't, you don't catch me on my way to play it. Mm. I really do like it a lot, obviously, and I yeah. do think that, again, most people, if they have any taste in the world, <laughs> they like it. Kata. 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 Oh, I apologize. So are you I saying, retract everything I said. Z, let me make, just, just to kind of follow that line of logic, so if they have good taste, they like the game, right? That's what I'm saying. And so if they have this game rated higher than you, that means they have better taste than you, am I right? 100%. Mark it down, Roy. There we go. 100%. Okay. Yeah, Everdell is a really, really neat tableau building, resource management, worker placement. A few different things all thrown into a stew and mixed around. And it gives you a nice, fun, light but thinky, combo-tastic mm -hmm. card game. Really enjoy it. 23 Everdell. Thank you, Bone Machine from Denmark! Denmark bone is machine. the best Your food. I was a little worried bad. about my number 23, which debuted last year at 63, but Z's game you just talked about has a bigger box than mine. The complete collection of everything. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. My 23 is one of the more... It's almost hypocritical for me to like this game as much as I do. Because I don't, I'm normally like calm down on productions. But you know what? I'm not alone. This was one of the most played games in the Dice Tower Cruise. Oh, I know what this and is. And that is Already, Foundations of Rome. See, you Woo! can't give me grief, man. Look at this. These are I'll like put a Foundations cult of, of the Rome new. Up against Aqua Garden. I'd do that 100%. They're both fantastic games. I like this game a lot. This is not a competition. The thing about Foundations of Rome is. Someone was just told me this the other day, and I thought that's probably a very true statement, is that this is one of those big, giant games mm -hmm. that also people can understand. Yeah. So you get to enjoy one of these big games. Because usually true. those big games are, over are overwhelming. You're it's like, very yeah. true. Ah! <laughs> Normally you get to paint it yeah. and stare at the rule book in amazement. Yep. Like, someday, my pretty, someday I'll get uh -huh. to you. That's true. And this one you get to play the game with a lot of people, too. That's true. You get to share this giant thing you got with folks that aren't intimidated yes, by it, you know, yes. or shouldn't be anyway. Man, I love this game, though. And again, I really was not expecting the production levels of this. Then I thought, yeah, some people would be interested in it. It sells out every single time. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. single time. And if the uh, it would have been checked out even more if we had had two copies. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So oh, for sure. I think people, again, I think people are looking for big games, but that they're also accessible. Because every morning at Dice Star Cruise, this and Mosaic were both checked out. Yes. Because they're big games. But you can play them. There's a lot of big games. You sit there and go, hmm. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. or you like respect them. You know, yeah. Like, I respect that game. That means, well, it's impressive, but I'm yeah. scared of it. Exactly. Because it's, it's too intimidating. Much. Nobody respects Foundations of Rome. No, no. That's no. really what I wanted to say. Correct. All right, the People's Choice 23. That's going to be a quote on the back of the new one. Was 128 last year and 222 the year before that. So this is the new entry, although it is not quite a new game. This is a game that continues to grow in popularity. Your clue is Top Hat. Fa uh, fa furnace. furnace. No. Top Hat. Oh, uh, uh, um... Roxley's reprint of brass? something, Brass, Birmingham, no. or Brass, something. It'll be, something. High, it'll be higher than All right, that. Let me give you a different clue then. Um, 
Gentleman Rappel. Mike Delicia. Furnace. <laughs> oh, you're talking about obsession. Wow, this high. Obsession? Whoa. Oh. Yeah, th I'm telling you what, this, this is, is nuts to me. This, this game, game it came out of nowhere. This game has been, yes. Th th this is a game that was like under the radar. I, remember, I mean, I, I had the first edition of this, you know, All right, we got a, hipster. a number of years ago, right? <laughs> I designed this game many years ago. And, you know, a few people were talking about it, and you'd see little rumbles of it, but right. all of a sudden it was like... I think several oh, no. influential people, I'm not pointing anyone in particular, mm -hmm. I think several influential people, there was a, just a bunch of blips. People said, this is one of my favorite games. Someone else, yeah. this is one of my favorite games. Right. Camilla should really like it. And then mm -hmm. as all these different people said it, more and more people looked into it. People played it and like, this is a really good game. It's yeah. just been on the rise, it man. Has. A slow burn, but yeah. these last couple of years, it's been Shot on up. fire. Also, the, the designer is super receptive to the community yes. and yeah. really tries to foster a community, which is important. That's Especially as an yeah. indie uh, uh, publisher, it's super important to build a community like he has. So Very good. It's a good Very game. Good. So number 23 for you all, Obsession. That's true. All right. <laughs> My number 22 is a brand okay. See? new game. Brand new game to the list. And the world. A very new game. To the world. This is a game that um, I highly anticipated, and it lived up to my expectations. It doesn't narrow it down, actually. Um, you backed it on Kickstarter. Of course Still I backed it on Kickstarter. It's also it widely available now on retail, in retail. And, and as a matter of fact, Marvel it United. was the game that I probably saw the most at Essen before I actually had oh. my copy. My number 22 Endless Winter. is Endless Winter Paleo Americans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, yes. So, this is a game that uh, does okay? a lot of things that I like very well. Um, it utilizes deck building in a way that is perfect for me, where I'm kind of with you that. It's it's fine. I mean, <coughs> deck building is fine. I don't dislike it by any means, but I want I want it to be a part of a bigger whole, and it does it very well in this game. This is a game that has some very clever card play that I like a whole lot. It has some area control elements. It has some deck building elements. It has some slightly <coughs> asymmetric powers. I love the look of the game. I absolutely adore this one, and uh, want to keep playing. In here with a and uh, you know, I've I've been. Uh, I've been messing around with the expansions. The expansions are nice, but just the base game itself is really fantastic. You know, it's a high debut. It's not the highest debut I've ever had, but this is a very high debut, and I do suspect it, it will rise. You really? talked about this all year, practically. I sure did. I, we, I, I sure should have thought did. of this as soon as you... This was very anticipated for it you was in and, every way. It was, and, and thankfully it didn't disappoint, because sometimes that'll That's happen, the worst. right? Sometimes it happens. A game you're really waiting for, yeah. really waiting for, and then disappoints. I've it, had a few this it's year. It's a much worse blow. You they're know? not on this list, obviously. Someday but, uh, I'll do yeah. my top 100 disappointments. Yeah, Ooh. that's a rough list to do. But I expect you to be in literal tears by the end correct. of that list. This one won't be on it. I absolutely adore Endless Winter Paleo Americans, my number... 22. My number 22 has been on many, many of these lists. I've liked this game for a long time. I still like it. I just reviewed an expansion to this, of which there are 20? I think oh, I so know that's what your this is. is. There's so many, and I is just this, reviewed an expansion to it. Is this a card-based battling game? No. Oh, it's not. Oh, interesting. Imperial, no, not I thought it was, it was one before. No, uh, the Nirishima Hex. Nirishima Hex. Oh, I Ooh. thought this would be higher. Okay. No, and Hiroshima Hex is now what I consider Neo Trash. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, Hiroshima Hex, let me see if I can find it on here, has been as high as my number two as well. It was my number two, this is uh, quite a few years ago, but two, mm -hmm. two, three, 14, 15, Neo Trash, Neo Trash. Uh, Neo Trash. <laughs> so, uh, I, like I said, they've just kept on coming with these expansions. I just reviewed the Pirates expansion. Great characters, new ideas, and that's the thing about this game. Yes, I love the feeling of the game. I really like the puzzle meets combat thing that this does. Fantastic. But my goodness, they keep coming out with content. Yeah. That is honestly clever and innovative and it mm. still hits and I still bring it out and go 
Oh, oh! I want to take these guys up against the, the Moloch. Mm. Oh, I wonder what these how these guys would function against this other faction. How far behind is the app? Oh gosh, I haven't cracked that thing open in a while. They they pulled the app down and put up a new app. Mm. I feel like it's behind though. Okay, I mean, they usually are. They don't. Yeah, I think it's behind ten factions or so. I don't oh. know. A lot behind. This is probably the game where you and I have the, the biggest disagreement on. For some reason, this really? one just... Really? I threw up in the Aqua Garden box. That's true. <laughs> okay? Don't tell me about well, the biggest disagreement. That's the only reason it's not Mike's top okay. 10. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What I did to the box of your number 6 will shock you. Will shock you. You <laughs> won't believe it. I think, I think it would shock me no matter where it was. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Thank you, Paul, from Texas. Our favorite state. Sebastian from Poland. Woo. Our favorite country. Stone Temple Glyph. My favorite kind of temple. Stop. And David, who was waiting for Z's 20 shoe. Okay. All right. 20 shoe. My 20 shoe's going to be good. My number 22 has, you know, I said there's things I like. There's one thing I do not like, and this game has it, and that is name confusion. Okay. Because I think this game, I, I, I had a hard time getting a few people to play with me because they thought it was the original game. You mean like Whistle Mountain? Yes, just like that. This is actually new to the list. I really love this game, name though. Confusion. And this is Ascension Tactics. Oh, oh gotcha. interesting. Yeah. 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 I love this. It is, is this wow. a miniatures game? Yeah, although you can play with in fact I often do play without the miniatures. I play with the standees. Um but it's so it, it's based on Ascension, so people it, I might they might like Ascension, they yeah. might not like Ascension. It uses some of the same mechanisms from Ascension. Right. It's a deck building game, but it's a deck building game in which you move around and fight fight, mm. and it's so fun. Because you get these cards and you upgrade them and you run around and you attack the other people. You, your cards are going to give you money or bonuses. And you're deciding whether you want to buy... You can even buy new heroes that then go on the map and run around. Hmm. And, man, there's just so much content. It's fast. We're talking 30 minutes. Wow. I really? Love, wow. I love this game. I mean, I don't know that I love it as much as... There's a, at least one other tactical game on my list that I know you know what it is. Mm -hmm. That I love a ton. So mm -hmm. sad. <laughs> That box is too small for you to throw mm. up in. Um, <laughs> but I, this really blew the doors off for me. I, yeah. I was not expecting it because I was like, ah, eh, it's Ascension, but somehow they're going to try to turn it into a miniatures game. Yeah. And it works. It works really well. I love it. So hmm. if someone said HeroScape with deck building, yeah, I think so. I think right. so. Huh. Okay. okay. Now, one of the things that I think is actually I dislike about this is the actual miniatures for this game I don't think much of. Okay. There's a lot of cool miniatures in games. These, they look okay. They're not particularly good miniatures. Okay. Of those old school kind of deck building games, I did like uh, Ascension. I, I thought it did, I thought it did, it's Well, it started the well. whole river thing, right? Yeah. Where there's a river of cards that you buy from, yeah. rather than specific decks. Hmm. Yes. So, that's my number 22. All right, here we go. Number 22 for you all. Here we go. Hmm. One more clue that's not obvious. <sighs> no, I can't give you a non-obvious, so I'll just give you an obvious clue. Bag. Quacks of Quedlinburg. No. Hmm. Orleans. Yes. Okay, there we go. Two bag builders. 22 this year was Orleans. It was 25 last year, then 20, 16, 10, 23, 46. For... Seven straight years, this is all high on the people's list. People really like this game. They do. Um, it's now it's being the cover. published, That's I what think. It is, is, did uh, Renegade get this? Who got this? Someone, because uh, TMG. Yeah, no, who did pick up Orleon? Um, I don't remember. Maybe it was Renegade? I don't know. I didn't think so. But well, either way, well, Renegade yeah. had the, 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 the sequel to it, which did not make the people's no, choice. No, no, no. Uh, Alta Plano. Alta Plano. Oh, that's right. That's the sequel. It's a fine game, but Orleans is just it's where it's at. And mm -hmm. people, you know, the idea of pulling stuff from a bag and then taking different actions and then customizing the stuff in your bag. I mean, the rest of it is moving around the board. It has some cool expansions. It's, yeah. It's a very fun game. Not surprised to see it this high. Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Final one for today, Mike, before we get into the teens. Final one, yeah, that's right. Woof. We're skipping 20? Yeah, we don't need 20, right? Let me check my 20. Before we get into we the can teen. skip my 20 and the people's My 20, choice. we cannot skip my 20. My 20 will be a new game. My 20 will shock you. Hey, my, I'm not going to shock you, but I'm a new game. I'm be good. Another new game? You said there was none. No, 20's next time, Tom. Oh, you're right. Yeah. All right. My 
Number 21 <laughs> has the curse of being immensely popular, and therefore it must be garbage. But no, it's not garbage. It's a very good game. Magic the Gathering. And it has broken out of the traditional hobby gaming sphere into the zeitgeist. This is a game that um, just does everything that it does so well. It is Wingspan. Talk oh, about well. a game that kind of launched a designer into the stratosphere, oh right? I mean, Elizabeth Hargrave. That's a three-way crossover. This was you not, uh, you know, she, um, she had done an earlier design, but it wasn't published beforehand. So you come onto the scene with Wingspan, right? It basically changes the hobby. I, I literally believe that, that it literally changed the hobby, that it yes. brought people in and, and it gave it exposure to it that, that other people didn't have. Um, then Mariposa is a really solid game. Tussie Mussy is a really solid game. Fox Experiment I absolutely adore is going to be coming out soon. So this is, I think, the, you know, the mm -hmm. arrival of a major talent. I love the theme. I love the look of the game. I like the engine building aspect of it. I like the tableau building. I like the dice rolling. I like everything about this game. Mm -hmm. The biggest, you know, curse I said, like I said, is that it's too popular, and so there's obviously people that are going to push back. But I adore it. I still, yeah, I still like it. Now, is... I need to say that I have not played with all the expansions. Mm -hmm. I haven't even played with the nectar. You know, the wild resource. I've not even played with that. Gosh, I haven't played with any of the expansions. I think I played with the first expansion, and that's it. I don't think I've tried any of them. Yeah, okay. The new one was a like a new mode for two players to yeah, go through do, like a yeah, little thing. Right. I'd love to try that. Sure. I did not mess with that. It sounded cool, but Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I mean my my wingspan on my list was mm -hmm. core game only because yeah. I haven't tried anything. Absolutely. Mine it's is, rock solid. Mine mm. is the whether expansions came out or not does not sure. affect my score at all. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like the game. The expansions are fine. I like some better than others, but mm -hmm. they're just essentially they boil down to more birds. More birds, and I'm I'm good with that. So my number twenty one wingspan, a a sensation. I believe this this is really Ooh, sensational. Just fantastic. Mm -hmm. We should do our top one hundred expansions, Tom. I've done it. I can do it again. Okay. Let's do it next week. Mm. Uh, <coughs> My number 21. You invited, so I don't know why you're... Well, look. My number 21 is a game from the, the same company as my number 22. It just worked out that way. It's a game that's been on Tom's list, I believe. Or and the People's, This I guess. is also from Portal. Yes. And this is Empires of the North. It is indeed Empires ah, of the North. That may be the only right. Portal game I think that might have made my top 100. I think. It wasn't on your top 100, yeah. Yeah. I like this a lot. Empires of the North. Look, Portal has a lot of fun games. I like the company overall quite a bit. I like a lot of their games. But I think when the designer of Empires of the North, or maybe co-designer, I'm not sure how it works, but I believe her name is Joanna Kajanka. When she came on to Portal as an in-house developer slash designer, I do feel like the company as a whole and a lot of their philosophies, a lot of the things they were doing, got a nice, you know, Kick in the pants. Yeah. There are, she's, she took Imperial Settlers slash 51st State and made this as a spinoff from that. Did expansions to Niroshima Hex. Did expansions to 51st State. Has done a lot of things over there that are really clever and interesting. And again, I think the name recognition is not there, as there was someone like Elizabeth Hargrave, mm -hmm. but she's a talent to watch. And she's, I think, got hired out of college. Yeah. So, amazing. you know, that's pretty impressive. It is. This one is very fun. It is a a game in which you have your own deck of cards. It's your your faction, your clan, and the things you can do, the things you're good at, the things you ideally will specialize in are all in that deck. The original game, Imperial Settlers, had a common deck of cards and then your own deck this one does away with that, does away with deck building, does away with any of that stuff. And so it's so much faster. You know, you grab your deck, you shuffle it up, you're ready to go. There's worker placement that happens in that little central area to help you gather resources, draw more cards, pay for some cards. But man, this is just the, the, the arc, the fun of that. Start with a couple of fields and a hand of three or four cards. And by the end, you're like, boom, 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 turn this, do that, uh, get this, spend this food for this thing, cash this in, four victory points, cash this in, three victory points, boom. That's fun. Like, you just do, you're doing so much. 
I love games in which you look at it at the end, look down at the end of the game, and it's so different from when, where you were at the beginning, and this one is like the epitome of that. So, Empires of the North, love it. My only beef with this is ultimately that I'd rather play with a lower player count. I sure. think it's a little long. Yeah. With three, with four especially, it's a little long. But other than that, this is rock solid. 21. Thank you, Nisal, for the super chat and the nice words about my tie. All right, my number 21 is a crossover with Mike. Ooh. It was my 10 last year, so it's dropped a bit. It was my 10 year before that. Um, four years on the list. Again, this is the whole snappy quick turn thing, really. Uh, and this SQT. SQT Vindication. Oh, okay. Vindication. Wow, yeah. I love Vindication. such a big game. And I'll tell you, when I first, I remember seeing this on Kickstarter thinking, I cannot wait to play this over-the-top adventure game. <laughs> and then I mm -hmm. went, that was not what I was expecting right, right. at all from that cover. Mm -hmm. But it's a fantastic game. It is definitely one of the biggest disconnects from a theme in gamingdom. It is. But I don't know that I mind so much. I'm happy with how fun the game is. Moving around from triangle to triangle. Yep. <laughs> yep. Changing color cubes and other color cubes to get victory points. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love it so much. So, vindication. <laughs> it's a good one. All right, and finally today, the people's choice. <laughs> All right, here's my clue for this one. All right, here this we go. Was, this has been on the list for five years. It was mm -hmm. 14 last year, mm -hmm. so pretty close. The clue is... Bathroom. Bathroom. It's a bad clue, but it's a clue that could be used. Bathroom. 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 For Z Garcia. Marvel Snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> yes. Okay. Don't be. Are you spying on my house? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, it, the tiles. Oh, Azul. Azul. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. Because these up get... like bathroom tiles in his I review. Made a, I, was, I was glib when I was doing the review and I said something about the theme not really being there. It's about tiling your bathroom or something, <laughs> which was obviously a joke. I right. was kidding. Right, right, right. I know what this theme is, you know, but... Mm -hmm. I can't. It the was number like, of people who were responding were to that like, one. Well, mm -hmm. actually, they well actually me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know what azulejos are. Like, <laughs> right. I, I, I'm, I got it. Yeah, but yeah. I was just joking around. That's anyway, four, five years on the list. It debuted at 16. It's at 21. This is Great one choice. of the hottest, you know, gateway style games. Yeah. And yes. none of the other azuls come close. Straight up. Yeah. I I was wondering if this was my favorite abstract game, and I think it is. It's not an abstract game. Sure, it is. So is New Yorkshire Hex. Uh, disagree. Well, we can, both New Yorkshire Hex is not a. It, it's abstract ish, you, but it's not an abstract. You, you can you can call it a pirate all you want. Is your fish game abstract? No. It's highly thematic. I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, uh, we can make this, folks. We can make this. We got twenty more woo, to go. Two more. You lifts. can make it too. Look at how many people are watching, and on less than ten percent of you have given this video a thumbs up. Oh my god! What is going on? But four oh of you gave it a thumbs goodness. down. So thank you. Thank you for those of you who are, <laughs> are engaged and honest people. That's right. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we'll be back with Smorgasbord. Yes. And then it's tomorrow at one, and then Friday, the top ten. Will it be good? You'll find out then. We'll find out. We'll all go to the good. dentist first. We'll make sure it's a good show. Oh, my word. Ooh. Please, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll watch. I I'll, I'll pretend. <laughs> yeah. I'll pretend. All right. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Zeke Garcia. And you've been watching our top 10 abstract games <laughs> that no one's ever heard of. Uh-huh. Mm.